Welcome to Homeopathic Pharmacy Academia. In this session, I am going to discuss about drug constituents or phytoconstituents. That is, the phytochemicals which is present in herbal medicines. The drug constituents or phytoconstituents or plant constituents. So it, there are two types of constituents. One is active and inactive constituents. Active constituents are classified as alkaloids, resins, glycosides, saponins, tannins, oils, etc. So Zacti constituents also contain some nutritional constituents of plants like carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, etc. But these nutritional constituents are not much of pharmacological action. So I am excluding such nutritional constituents. I am only discussing about active pharmacological importance of constituents. And it also contains inactive constituents. Inactive constituents such as cellulose, lignin, etc. It forms the structure of the plant or structure of the herb rather than having any nutritional or pharmacological action. So, in today's video lecture, we are going to discuss more about pharmacologically active constituents of plants like alkaloids, glycosides, resins, saponins, tannins, and oils. Here, oils means both fixed oils and volatile oils. Now, let us see what exactly is phytochemistry. Phytochemistry is a study of active principles of the plant. I already told active principles are alkaloids, glycosides, tannins, saponins, resins, oils. So the study about these constituents, the structure, the properties, the solubility, and some examples. So that what we are going to study in phytochemistry. And these chemicals are also known as phytochemicals. Let us see what are the phytochemicals or phytoconstituents present in a plant. Alkaloids, glycosides, saponin, tannin, resin, volatile oil, fixed oils, fats and waxes. So these are the important pharmacologically active plant constituents. Let us see one by one. First, we will see the alkaloids. Alkaloids are organic nitrogenous substances, more or less alkaline in nature and are secondary metabolites of the plant. So alkaloids contains mostly the nitrogen or nitrogen containing compounds and chemically it is alkaline in nature. So that is why it is known as alkaloids, alkali like and they are the secondary metabolites of the plant. Secondary metabolites means it is derived from the primary metabolites like carbohydrate, protein, or the lipids. Now let us see what it contains. Alkaloids always contains carbon, hydrogen, 
and one or more than nitrogen and oxygen sometimes sulfur so this is the chemical composition of alkaloid now the name of alkaloid n in i n e so by looking the name of the alkaloid or a, a phytoconstituent we can easily make out whether it is an alkaloid or not the name always end in i n e now some history the term alkaloid was coined by w meibner but the first alkaloid synthesis was conine from cornium maculatum or commonly it is a uh, it is a very poisonous substance poisonous plant that is poison hemlock so the alkaloid uh, which is synthesized or extracted or derived from poison hemlock or conine conium maculatum that is conine that is the first alkaloid extracted out and most of the alkaloids are colorless except berberin that is yellowish in color and betadine that is red in color and most of the alkaloids are bitter in taste except piperin piperin is an alkaloid which is tasteless and most of the alkaloids are odorless except nicotine you know nicotine which is an alkaloid of tobacco tobacco plant which is having a characteristic and high odor so this is about the common properties of alkaloid and i told you it is uh, colorless and it is bitter in taste and mostly it is odorless and how to identify an alkaloid for so there are some reagents which is used for the identification of alkaloids say so for example a maize reagent maize reagent is nothing but it is mercuric potassium iodide uh, if the alkaloid is present then it forms the white precipitate now another reagent which is used for the identification of alkaloid is wagner's reagent that is iodine in potassium iodide chemically and it shows a brown precipitate then one more reagent which is used to for the detection of alkaloid is drag and drop reagent chemically it is potassium bismuth iodide and if alkaloid is present it shows a orange precipitate now let us see some of the examples of alkaloids and this is very very important as far as exam is concerned so i'll list out some important alkaloids from some common herbs which is used as drug in homeopathy aconitum napellus the alkaloid is aconitin see the term aconitin ends in i n e belladonna atropin naxomica brucin and strychnin cinchona cinchonine quinine quinidin colchicum autumnale colchicin ipicaquana emitin opium morphin codeine tebane papaverin so these are some of the very important examples of alkaloid next we will see another phyto constituents that is glycosides glycosides are non reducing organic substances which are colorless crystalline or amorphous solid substances which are soluble in water and alcohol but insoluble in ether and chloroform so it is 
otherwise say crystalline or amorphous you know amorphous means it is shapeless or without a clearly defined shape or a form and it contains a non reducing organic substances so here the non reducing is a sugar that is a carbohydrate that is not oxidized by a weak oxidizing agent that is what you mean by non reducing sugar or organic substances the characteristic property of a non reducing sugar is that uh in a basic aqueous medium they do not generate any compounds contain aldehyde group so that is a property of a non reducing organic substances or non reducing sugar and the name of all glycosides end in in whereas in alkaloid it is ine in glycoside it is in now let us see some some more examples of glycosides adonis fernalis adonin see the name in it ends in in adonin allosocodrina alloin colosynthesis colosynthesis digitalis digitalin digitoxin digoxin titoxin so these are some examples syncona kinovin tuja oxidandalis tujin tujitin tujenin see sometimes in same plant it may contain alkaloids glycosides and other important phyto constituents it is a mixture now let us see another phyto constituents that is saponin saponins are plant glycosides with distinctive property of frothin saponins are not different from glycosides chemically it is having a same property of glycosides but it is having a distinct property of frothin you know sometimes some herbal extract or some other tinges if you shake well there is a formation of froth and this formation of froth is due to the saponin content in that particular mother tincture or extract they are non crystalline and dissolve in water forming a colloidal solution which we can see as froth the examples are digitonin from digitalis calendula saponin from calendula officinalis cyclamen from cyclamen officinalis so these are the a uh, few examples of saponins now let us see another phyto constituent that is tannin tannins consist of a complex organic non nitrogenous phenolic compounds of high molecular weight here alkaloids are nitrogenous compounds but tannins are non nitrogenous phenolic compounds of high molecular weight and they possess a property to tan that is to convert skin of an animal into leather so tanning is a process of treating skin or hides of animals to produce leather which uh, which are more durable and less susceptible for decomposition and this tanning hide into leather involves a process which permanently alters the protein structure of the skin so the skin of animal that is a hide is converted into more durable leather and uh, tannins are having a stringent property they are bitter plant phenolic compound and uh, and it can able to precipitate protein and various other organic compounds including amino acids and alkaloids and there are mainly three types of tannins the one is hydrolyzable tannin so here the hydrolyzable tannin means 
they are decomposable in water with which they react to form other substances so it is uh, capable of hydrolyzable or decomposable and it yields various water soluble products such as uh, gallic acid uh, and uh, proto catechic acid and other sugars so commonly gallotannin and other common tannic acid are the best examples of hydrolyzable tannins examples uh, tannins from a uh, rue or uh, tannins from hamamelis so these are some uh, examples of the drugs or plants uh, uh, herbal drugs which contains hydrolyzable tannin so in short we can say these tannins are decomposable in water and it forms other compounds like gallic acid and it is produced by extraction with the water so when these uh, plant extractors are extracted with the water it contains mostly hydrolyzable tannins now next one is condensed tannin condensed tannins the examples are cinnamon and cinchona so the condensed tannins are not amenable to uh, hydrolysis the next variety is pseudo tannin pseudo tannins are low molecular weight compounds associated with other compounds we know tannins are basically high molecular weight phenolic compounds whereas pseudo tannins are low molecular weight compounds which are associated with other compounds and they do not change color during uh, gold beta's skin test that is another uh, that is an identification test for tannin that is gold beta's skin test so pseudo tannins are not amenable to gold beta's skin test unlike hydrolyzables and condensed tannin and uh, these tannins pseudo tannins cannot be used as a tanning agent or tanning compound and the examples are collagenic acid from naxomica or coffea or epicanic acid from epicana so these are some examples of various types of tannins now let us see the next one that is resins so resins are plant exudates except shellac or lac so when you injure a plant there will be a secretion of some plant exudate so such exudates are known as resin but it is except shellac or lac shellac is a resin secreted by a female lac bug on trees in the forest of india and thailand it is processed and sold as a dry flakes and dissolved in ethanol to make liquid shell which is used as a brush or a colorant or food glaze or a wood finish okay. so these resins are not produced by any bug but from the plant itself so that is why shellac and lac has got exemption from the resins shellac is excreted by some bugs which is living on plant whereas resins are produced by the plant itself now the resins found in dissolved which is dissolved in volatile oils that is called oleo resins so when a resin is mixed with a uh, volatile oil then it is known as oleo resins for example uh, we can see these oleo resins in uh, capsicum cardamom cinnamon clove fenugreek ginger uh, then uh, parsley black or white pepper etc because these uh, spices contains oleo resins that is the resins dissolved in volatile oils which are very commonly seen in 
spices like cinnamon, cardamom, clove, fenugreek, etc. Now, another one is resins in association with both volatile oil and gum are called as oleogum resin. So, uh, in this oleogum resin, it can be also seen in volatile oil and the gum. And another variety is if the resins contains benzoic acid or cinnamonic acid or their esters, they are called as balsams. And balsams are very uh, pleasant order, which is found in some of the uh, plants, which is responsible for the fragments of the particular plant. Examples for gum resins are sophotida and there is another uh, substance called lignin. Lignins are compounds that forms binding blocks of plant cell walls. So they contain phytoestrogens, that is some plant hormones that helps to regulate body's estrogen production. So estrogen, you know, it is a, it is a female hormone which is present in the human beings. So these lignins contains uh, phytoestrogens, uh, which can uh, capable of acting in human beings to regulate uh, the estrogen in the human beings. So the lignin containing plants are podophyllum. So the lignin which is present in podophyllum is podophyllotoxin. Now the next phytoconstituent is volatile oil or essential oil. Essential oil or volatile oils are odorous constituents of the plant. That is, it is having a characteristic odor, characteristic smell. They are liquid and volatile with characteristic smell. They are the characteristics of certain odors such as Labiaceae, Proteaceae, Meritaceae, Lauraceae, Piperaceae and Singibraceae. So, you know, all these plants which belongs to this family contains the volatile oils. For example, Labiaceae. Labiaceae, uh, the common uh, species are Osimum sanctum, Osimum gasetissimum, that is the Tulasi. Rutaceae, uh, which is uh, Ruta. Ruta contains so many volatile oils. Then piperaceae, piperaceae is piper, piper longum, piper nigrum. So these are all having a characteristic order because of this essential oils. The examples are mentha peperata, that is peppermint oil. That is mentha peperata is the menthol. Camphora, camphor, you know camphor is having the characteristic order. Nas Moscata, where the nutmeg oil is derived from. And very important example, eucalyptus oil, which is an essential oil from eucalyptus. Sandalwood oil from Santalum album. Sandal. So these are some examples of volatile oil or essential oils. Now let us see the fixed oils, facts and waxes. So here, the fixed oils and fats are obtained from plants which differ only as regards to their melting point, but chemically they belong to the same group. So they are not volatile, but uh, they are stable at the atmospheric temperature. If the substance is in liquid at 15.5 degrees Celsius, to 16.5 degrees, it is called as fixed oil. And if this becomes solid or semi-solid at the above temperature, then it is known as fat. And these fixed oils or waxes, if a small quantity is placed on a paper, they produce a permanent translucent stain 
on the paper and constantly and consequently they are known as a uh, fixed oils because they they produce a fixed stain on a paper examples are resinous commonus that is castor oil crotum tiglinum that is croton oil then hypnocarpus oil from hypnocarpus carpus rigidae so these are some example of fixed oil or waxes and i am concluding this session of phyto constituents or drug constituent thank you